Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be teaching you about the golden ratio and how to use it to create a logo in Adobe Illustrator. Let's get started. Before we start making a logo, I'm going to tell you what this golden ratio is. It's a quote unquote perfect mathematical ratio that people have studied for centuries to measure out things in a very pleasing proportion. Uh, artists from centuries ago, like Da Vinci, would use this for their artwork, uh, design, and it would even show up in architecture a lot of the time. And not only that, but it can be found in nature too. Okay, here's our golden ratio. There are two examples of it that I'm using right here, which is the golden spiral at the top, which you'll see the most often if you ever look this up, and then the golden circles at the bottom inside of the golden rectangle. This the formula again is 1.618 so in order to create this you can take one of your shapes divided by 1.618 and you'll get these proportion squares going down and down and down into an infinite spiral it's a very pleasing ratio to the human eye which is why it's so successful and it's such a popular ratio in most of history uh you'll see this a lot of the time if uh, designers want to create something very evenly proportioned. And it's very useful if you ever want to use it in your paintings, in your photography, and anything in, in regards to design. We're going to be making this bottom one here, which is the circles. So I'm going to get this one out of the way. I'm going to move this up to the top. And we're going to zoom in here. We'll create a perfect square by holding shift. I'm going to hold alt on it. Drag it down and snap it. I'm going to create a circle on the inside of it. Corner to corner. I'm going to take both, hold Alt, and do the same thing. But we're going to increase the size of it by holding Shift and snapping it to that top one. And we're going to basically keep doing this in a counterclockwise motion until we get the number of circles that we want, and I want seven total. We don't need to make a circle here because this is the same size, and this square here basically represents the rest of the infinite spiral going down. So this is basically just blank space. It's a way of estimation. And there you have it, a perfect golden ratio. We can basically remove, we can copy this over. Copy this over so you don't lose track of it if you ever need to use it again. Whoops. I'm just gonna put it off to the side there in case you need it again. I'm going to increase the size of this and remove our first one here. Actually, never get that square. And we're basically going to get rid of the squares and leave the circles to use as a tool for our logo. And see how this creates like an actual spiral even without those squares there to guide us? We're going to highlight all of it and align it all to center. And this is our tool here. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to getting our sketch in here and then we'll make the logo. Okay, we have our sketch here in Illustrator. Uh, we're gonna be using it as a stencil by putting these circles over top of it. This, these circles over here are our tools and we do not wanna change the shape of them at any point. The only time we change the shape is when we have the sketch and we want to make sure that the biggest circle matches up with our biggest curve and then everything else will fall in place. I have resized it to a point where it looks like our biggest circle is about right with that very large curve we have going up over the top of the toucan's head. So we're going to keep it there and if you feel that uh, you need another one just store another one right down here because when we're going to be using it we're going to be holding alt and making copies of it if you accidentally, accidentally don't hit alt and you don't realize that you're going to get rid of a circle in your tool so just keep a spare one down there uh, we're going to take our biggest circle start lining it up and we're going to put a circle over top of every curve that we see 
uh, it's okay to have a few lines here, but if you have triangles and squares, it makes it a lot harder for your sketch. Your sketch needs to have a lot of curves to it. Mine is completely made up of like almost all curves and circles. I'm going to just keep putting these in. And the hard part about this is that once you get into having a lot of circles in this, if your design has a lot of, a lot of detail to it, then you're going to get lost very easily once you have a lot of circles in here. Which is why I had this sketch below it, because it's so easy to like lose track of wh what your shape is going to be. So having the toucan below here will really help me. Now for this, since I have two straight lines on the bottom of the beak, I want to make this curve here that has like the curve of the top part of the beak going up here. I want to move that down to here and make a second one of those, right? Okay. I'm going to hold shift and move it over perfectly until that curve is there. I'm going to get the bigger curve and line that up so we get the front of the beak. And when you're making these smaller connections here, your circles won't snap to each other at their at their sides. You need to make sure that you overlap it just a little bit because if you don't, you could have these gaps go in between. If you really need to check these gaps, you can hit Control Y. It'll bring you into a, a line mode that will give you the very, very fine vectors. And when I zoom in there, that gap will ruin us later. So you want to let this just overlap just a little bit and make adjustments as you go along because this is a very hard process. I'm going to make sure I keep that straight. Get that overlap just a tiny bit. I'm going to copy it down. And I want to make a curve for the bottom part of the beak going down into the beak itself. Yeah, it's a little hard to do. I'm just going to put it about right there. Y, make sure that's all good. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to take a bigger circle, get this part of the beak in there, the very back. And we're going to take our pen tool and make some lines here for the parts of the beak that we want, the bottom and the top. And we have this bar going here, so we have this bottom part of the beak. That we have most of the circles there, it's kind of hard to tell where the actual shape of the bird is. But what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight everything, take our shape builder tool, and start holding alt and chunking off these big parts on the outside. You want to like just chip away like we're chipping at a sculpture to find out what's underneath and create our figure. You can hold left click as well to combine your shapes. And that's what we're gonna be doing in here, just to combine everything. Now, if there's ever a case where, say I wanna fill in this here, and the entire thing here, these two, show up as gray, then it means like your line didn't connect properly there. So you need to hit Control Y, look in there to see if there are any gaps, because those gaps will ruin you. I'm gonna keep filling everything in, get every little tiny shape that you've created out of the way. Going to be the white part of the bird, and this is going to be the black part. And last thing is that uh, you don't have to do this for every little corner you see, but what I like to do is I like to take any harsh little point that the circles have made when uh, merging into each other. I like to just take it, uh, I like to click on it with the direct selection tool and take this little circle and curve it down so it has a good flow to it. It's not like against the rules or anything to do that, but don't do it to a drastic amount to where it'll change like your entire uh, circle's proportion. Okay, that looks pretty good. We got everything we needed there. We're going to drag this down here and just see the shape of it. 
going to take the stroke off of it and fill it with dark gray. Now what I want to do is I want to make some negative space here, so I'm going to just delete this shape altogether and that'll be the white part of our toucan. You can make some adjustments if you need to. I'm going to move this circle that apparently there are two of them there. I'm going to, wait, what? How many are there? Three! How did I get three eye circles there? Okay. I'm going to just move that right there so it's even between the two shapes. And... What I want to do is I want there to be three colors on the beak here. So we're going to do one more thing with the ratio. I'm going to take this circle and the one size above it. I'm going to line them up with each other. And then I'm going to move this over so that it's a little off center horizontally. I'm going to take both of them. And I'm going to make it so the space of the beak for these sections of color are even with each other, so I like, kind of divide this into thirds. Right there's about good. I'm going to highlight these two. I'm going to get rid of the stroke. Don't want that in there. And I'm going to highlight all that and just remove this outside. I'm going to click once. Oh, set your fill to that dark gray. I'm going to click once in all these sections and we'll have our shapes there. So, we have all sections of the beak. Now, we want to add some color to this. We're going to go up to uh, Adobe Color Themes, uh, hit Explore. And what you can do is you can just search any word that you want to. I searched Toucan earlier and got a really good swatch in my colors here, which are going to be our feathers, the eye color, and the three colors of the beak. So we're going to take our feathered part, turn it to that black color, take our eye, make it that dark blue, I'm going to highlight the first section of our beak, make it orange, highlight this next part, make it this yellow green, and highlight the last part and make it the light blue. And two more things, I'm going to take our tiny circle here that we haven't used yet, I'm going to make a little highlight on the eye, so it looks a little less creepy. I'm going to remove that stroke, highlight both, and take that chunk off. See, we have a little highlight on our eye. It makes it look a lot more cute. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight these bottom sections of the beak here. We're going to hit Control c to copy, and Control f to paste it in place. So we have a copy of these right over top of the original. We're going to go up to our transparency options here and set the type of transparency to multiply. This will create a very small tint and it looks very, very nice. We're going to hit Control Shift G to ungroup things. Nope, nope Control. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Alt 2 to get rid of the sketch. We're going to move this up to the very middle, and we're going to add some text to it. Let's make the font pretty big here, let's say about 150. And let's change it to a very nice script font. I have a very nice one in mind. Let's do Nautilus uh, Pompilius Regular. It's a very nice script font. type out toucan. I'm going to make this a bit smaller because this kind of comes out as an icon. And we are done. Leave a like if you learned something. Thank you.